Okay, now we're going to look at uh, a new article on something very old. The Shigir idol depicting the ancient spirit world originally stood tall besides a paleo lake. This just came out here last month. Wooden statue, 5.3 meters high, so this thing is huge, with eight faces, gazed over the water for only about two decades, but leaves us with a conundrum 11,600 years later. And uh, you can see the side view of the face edifice here, and then this planked body here. Now, these people were definitely working with wood at this time, but this is going to show to be the oldest wooden statue that we've ever found, and it's definitely the oldest totem pole ever found. Let's look into this. It could be the origin of totem poles. Probably is. It's three times as old as the Egyptian pyramids. With this evocative main face and O-shaped mouth, which you can kind of see in the little picture down here, its mysterious zigzagged etch lines, the Shigir idol is now accepted as one of the world's oldest examples of monumental art and oldest wooden art. All the more remarkably, it has made a larch of not stone, yet still survived. Thanks to it falling into a peat bog, once a paleo lake, in which it was suburbably preserved. So the lake dried up and turned into a peat bog, or a moor type of thing, and then this was kept in it, just like you find the bodies that are over in England and all that, with the sacrificed bodies and how well they were preserved. Peat protects things pretty good in a lot of situations, whereas in other acidic soils and so on, it just disappears rapidly. Now experts who know it best are suggesting some intriguing new theories about this ancient relic found in their 19th century by Tsaris gold prospectors. Uh, and this is up in the uh, Ural Mountains, by the way. One that is believed to have stood tall over the long-gone Shigir Paleo Lake. Another is that it held this position for more than 20 years or so. While some scientists have suggested it resembles a totem pole, experts insist that the lower part of the Shigir idol was not, as might be expected, dug into the ground to support it, though. Rather, it was propped up against a tree or perhaps more likely against a rock face on the shore of the water. Look how tall this thing is. I can't even capture it all in one deal. There's the top head that's up there. And it's got kind of this O oh, going on a little bit. There's 26 lines on this part right here. And then a zigzag made of one deep gouged line, which looks like electricity. And a face that's right here carved into the bottom of it there. And then double lines leading down to what seems to coil and go over to one side and then wrap around a bunch of times. Then we have the effigy of the hands in front of the body that we see a lot of times, uh, like the hands coming around the body, and another face that's right here, if you can see it with the nose and the two eyes, another series of lines, one single lightning bolt or whatever, if you will, down onto a mountain, right? And then more lines below that, and then another what I uh, close up of a mountain, if you will, I don't know, arrowheads, chevrons aiming up, and another face here with a cowling under it, an X mark and more lines below that, and then a broken looking sign that looks weird where the lines come and one juts over and the other cuts wet right across, missing one extra of the zags. Almost makes no sense to anybody here. At the bottom is somewhat rounded off, but then the very, very tang on the bottom of it there, they said, was pretty much smushed, and you could tell that it held its weight on it the entire time. Now, they could have dug it into the ground uh, all the way to say, oh, this guy here someplace, and said that was it, and put a stone on the bottom so it wouldn't just submerge into the earth and go any deeper. Maybe they put it in the ground once or did one before this and saw that it sunk and did things, and... So they put a stone under the bottom of it, and still its weight was held onto a stone. So there's a lot of ideas can go on that, but no, they seem to think that it didn't. And they even think that you could take a tree like this and take a few of the forward this side branches off and then hang it on there. And this would be some type of Slender Man situation. 
Now another oddity too is that it's quite often shown like this, but now they found its arms and he has these long arms that hang down to about here. And there seems to be a leg type effect that was to it too. And we'll look at that here in a minute. But here's a depiction of the way this thing looks. Right, so you can see the face. And then there's 26 lines here, and there's 52 weeks in a year, so does that have anything to do with it? I mean, yeah, it'd be far-fetched, because did they have a week? Did they have seven days declamated or anything like that? But anyhow, so we go on. People say, that's a face right there, I don't see it. But then there's this gouged-in lightning line that comes down, and I definitely do see the face that's right here, and how this lightning changed into a double chain and then this line that comes down the center of it leading through the DNA type helix that wraps around and around and around and it seems to be on this side and not this side the first one and it goes around and around and around like if it was a coiled rope and then a lot of people at first said this is a deer's head and this is the face and this is the ears and those are the horns but then once they realized how eroded this was away and stuff they started realizing if I sharpen the edges of that's a face that's a total face. So here we have a sectionated totem pole with faces and things that are on it. The only thing it's missing from a lot of totem poles that you see are the modern ones is like little wings put on it and stuff. Of course those are made by putting dashes or gouges in this side and then shoving in a wing and it hangs there pretty much. They, they don't come from that in the first place. And uh, you know the limbs that are up here on the top of this was all made out of one tree of course the limbs that are up there look like they were saved for the purpose of making the arms and the legs too and stuff and you get down here to the bottom and I see another Halloween-y looking face right here looking at us and then you get this crisscross which could be arms crossed in a way somehow and then it comes down with this off zigzag it goes all the way down but then all of a sudden it ends oddly and offset and the other picture of it showed this had a different little zigzag to it where this cut across and that cut across all the way over here. Anyhow, and so you can see how large this thing is. And again, uh, they always show it as just that monument that's there. And you can see down the sides of it and the dashes are all the way around it, coiling and everything. Here's the back, right? But then you can see the face right there, I guess, pretty easy into it. And there's a face right there too, you know. But uh, there's also these long skinny pieces, and those are the arms and the legs that come off the bottom of it right here that were found. And the face that goes, ooh. Three times as old as the Egyptian pyramids. This idol has already shattered our understanding of early ritual art by the hunter gatherers at the end of the Ice Age. All the more so when tests revealed last year proved it to be even older as it was created some 11,500 to 11,600 years ago than previously understood. It reveals a depth of artistic talent unexpected before the onset of farmers. Now, Dr. Mikhail Zillin, lead researcher of the Age Archaeology Department in Institute of Archaeology, Russian Ad Academy of Sciences, has told the Siberian Times, based on the facts I can clearly say that it was not dug into the ground like totem poles. It uh, was standing on a relatively hard, presumably stone pedestal because of the lower part got flattened by strong pressure and this sculpture was quite heavy. And you can imagine it was a whole tree, like a caber tree, like the trees they throw and do things with, but also very much like an Asherah tree or what you hear about in the Bible type of things. And then that led, of course, to the monolithic points like what's out in front of the Vatican still and the Egyptian ones that we talked about before but um, according to the dendrologist Carl Uwe Husner the sugar idol stood like this on shore of a large sugar paleo lake for about 20 years then a large crack appeared in the middle followed by a series of smaller cracks the idol must have fallen in the water floated for about a year and then sank to the lake's bottom and a formation of peat around it began. And uh, there's another good close-up of the face of it. And they say they can tell by the gouges and scratches that are through here that this thing was made by taking the lower jaw of a beaver and using it as the scraping implement on this and probably wetting the wood 
and then scraping and gouging it out and so on. So here's another drawing of it. And so you can see the face that's here. And then there's another face here. There's another face here. There's another face here. Well, people say there's eight on here total if you try to count the ones like those two eyes and a mouth and so on. But I don't, I don't, I don't I'll go with eight. I'm going to go with them, though, on it. 11,600 years ago, and that type of dating keeps coming up. Within about a six to 800 year period, we see a whole lot of things showing up. And of course, Gobekli Tepe itself, but a lot of other things show up at this time. There seems to have been a lot of hecticness, and also a lot of these things seem to have been able to be covered up and protected. You know, like dinosaurs got muddified. Whenever you find a dinosaur, they didn't just die there and usually lay and rot out and then slowly over time get covered with dust. There was something that pretty much blew and took them over and it encased them. When you find fish fossils and things like that, that's what that happened from. They weren't just laying out on the, on the sand or whatever and then it slowly got higher and higher and eventually packed and made a sedentary rock. It's not the same thing. Also, it is not really in the bottom of silt layers and stuff. When you find slate and it's got it in there and stuff, can show you that it was pushed in in that way and there were like floods and bad things going on during that time. We realize it, but don't think it can happen during our lifetime, but I talked about that in other videos here recently. This idol may have been tied by strapping to harness it in place, but was not held by another structure. We did not find any trace of counterforce, said Dr. Zeeland. If supporting beams or forks were used, it would have had clear traces, but we don't see them. So if it sat on something and rubbed or did whatever, they'd notice this, and they've looked all over it and everything, and they've tried to come up with ideas. These people have spent years looking at this thing. There was an idea previously that the idol could be put on a raft and was floating out in the lake. We have no data to confirm this, though, but people came up with that idea. A lot of ideas can come out of this. You could say, was this a scarecrow? Was this, since it has eight faces, is this uh, Thoth and the seven followers of Shimsu Hor and the and the seven Apkul sages of the Anunnaki and so on or no this is way way before this but does that lead into that concept in any way is there something they have along with these eight things and we don't know what these faces symbolize but it's entirely possible that these do mean people's faces that they do mean certain things and objects is this a river god they're appeasing and they're putting these other gods that are up there with it and at this one time they already had eight gods in a pantheon all developed. There's a lot of conjecture that can come out of this, but when we look at things, we look at Proto-Indo-Europeans and it starts to kind of disappear. Genetics shows us certain things now, and that's all we can really go off of and how it happened before, and small found remnants like these that you really have to put a lot of conjecture into. You have to say, well, before 6,000 years before this, we find these idols with these flattened faces, kind of like this, blah, 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 and they're way over here you know, over near Anatolia, so is this the same culture? And you can't connect it because these people don't have the same corded ware pottery or anything like that, you know? And so how can you connect them? Well, if you find the genetics of somebody, you can connect to these people around this time in that area and look at them and does that connect to the people over there or how does this all work? And So it's kind of one of the last bastions here and genetics is gonna actually make us really penetrate through time once we figure it out 100%, or at least close to it, we're going to really find out things that we thought we never knew we never knew. So uh, he tends to think that it was standing near the lake water in a quiet or secluded place, probably in the edge or a little covelet or whatever, and it may have been a marker for them whenever they were on the lake to look around and see if you can find that stick sticking up. Whenever you see it, you'll be like, okay, we're here, that's there. It may not have even been at their camp. It also may have been a scarecrow for other people not to mess with our pond. It could be a lot of things. This thing is huge, though. I mean, it's the size of a telephone pole, pretty much. It's like, what, 18, 19 foot? And uh, so you can see how it looks here. You can definitely tell the double-lined part versus the single-lined part, which almost looks like a Christmas tree. A lot of people said, you know, that this is this, that's that, a Christmas tree. This is the God in heaven, here's the air God, here's the lightning, here's the thing, here we go, there's the earth, and now there's the underworld God. 
you know, and, and I looked at this in symbolism, and I'm like, man, if you could attach that at about five other places, I might be able to go with it, but I, uh, it, it fits other people's logistics, but it's too early to claim it goes along with anything else that has that type of connection to it, to where you, you know, you, you'd have to say, even though it sounds great, it's one of those things where you'd love to put that on there, but even though it sounds great, you can't tack that on there. You cannot put a pin in that. As one of my researchers said, uh, you, you can't put a pin in that, but you want to stick it, you know. So I'm like, what? And you know, when this is sticky notes and crap and everything. You put a sticky note up so you don't forget it, but don't put a pin in it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this is now kept at the Sverdlovsk Regional uh, History Museum in Yekaterinburg. And uh, the, Dr. Zeeland has also clarified Kames ba based on, er on an earlier scientific research publication that this Mesolithic Age idol depicts demons. And demons aren't so bad. Let me read what this is and I'll tell you something here. I presume that some journalists caught the word demon in our first publications and took it out of context, he said. It's actually a very wide range of meanings, even in English, from devil to good genius. Even the idol was created 11,500 years ago. We can't yet or possibly ever just say what it depicted. We don't have enough good context. And uh, so, yeah, but, uh, you know, whenever you say demons and things like that, I showed you these Pazuzu dolls of the Sumerians and things, and these were wards. They thought that uh, Lilith was going to come and steal the breath of their babies, and so they put this thing up. It looks like a monster. But apparently he protected you and babies. You know, like a dog will protect a child, you know. So it protected and wasn't going to let the bad guy come in and these protections and wards and things like that. And whenever you look at it later, you have to, like, supposedly put a spirit to this and it's got to either, you know, it's, it, it's got to be a good or a bad, but if you look, nobody's ever conjuring an angel whatsoever. They're all spirits or demons or daemons. And so what does that have to do with? Well, no, it doesn't have to do with what everybody thinks and a guy in a pitchfork and BS nowadays that they've come up with and this crazy idea of hell and some stupid crap. That's, that's really a farcical tale taking the idea of the fawn gods and satyrs of the Canaanites that they had from an old elder religion that came through there and then saying okay yeah there you go and then they had the religion of Poseidon and all these things and Pluto the god of the underworld and they have tridents and they have this red ochre symbology and bullshit and there you go there's a red devil with a good damn pitchfork but I digress he tells you also these could be some kind of spirits not deities because we think that deities appeared much later. And I'm telling you that people already had deities. It may not be the way that we're thinking now. For, you know, other than the God God that we tried to put everything together, which actually does attach to Saturn and other gods, the gods of this world were planets and things like that, right? Well, they had had people, primordial people, that pulled off certain things, or effigies, or they put things together, and then said, this is this one guy idolized this one thing to look at as being a you know holotype and then they deified it as being one of the planets whenever they found each one of them ironically though they're in order of what the Sumerians had their order of their thing in which is strange and actually goes into a lot deeper things that I go into in my other videos but let's just continue here um, well, we can't be sure what the idol depicted. We mustn't underestimate the people who created it. And that's what I wanted to say before I said that. They had all the necessary tools and skills, plus a rather complex view of the world, which to them was populated with spirits, not only animals or trees, even stones were animals. In fact, this is the time when people had a connection more to nature and everything had their essence where we get the idea of tree nymphs and things because there were sacred trees there's water gods there's all kinds of things that people were putting on it because it was the golden age of whee and butterflies and fairies and all kinds of things that lead back to a primordial time we kind of hearken at somehow and we wonder you know when I was a kid we were told that after 4000 BC everybody's a ug now we find Gobekli Tepe that's three times that old and this too and stuff, the Sumerians that show us it goes back and where the Bible comes from and things, everything is 
really kind of warped and changed really in the last I'm, I'm guessing 65 70 years or so and if you'll look back at it people already had inklings of this long 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 ago long long ago anyhow so uh, here's another depiction of this guy and he's held up with little wire frames around the body that's here now inside of that structure that they have him in and there's close-ups of it you can see it here and certain parts of it have brought it away we're just slowly going down it to the bottom the bottom is stumped at the end, I guess, right? World's oldest wooden statue. World's oldest totem pole. I don't care if it's stuck in the ground or not. You're going to call this, you call, Stonehenge is a stone circle? Yeah? Okay, and then uh, this circle over here, that's a stone circle, right? Yeah, okay, well, they're totally different than each other, but they're really the same thing. That's a totem pole. It even has multi-faces on it and the whole idea, and you know that it has a spirit entity connected to it, but they don't want to say this. I'm telling you now that these people here, I just shot a recent video, I'll probably put these two back to back so they connect, so you'll understand. But uh, they, they, they found Malta Boy and things, and he's got a whole lot of Indo-European and, and European people in him, right? And it's a mix between that and the Amerindians, and that seems to be the proto-Amerindians that he come across and a mix that's there. I'm going to do a couple videos because there's 30 articles on it. The one I just did on it was actually an elder article but it really kind of puts it in a synopsis. Um, but there are new things that are found now and people have put little conjectures and stuff like the thing around his neck looks like a uh, you know, winged sun disc type of thing and then he's also found with a bird effigy and all these type of things and can you put that together and is that a thunderbird and what is this and there's sun worshipping and stuff is that is that what that is? Different things like that. But uh, they're telling you that they think it's something close to animism. But then again, it looks like people. It doesn't look like animals. These people already have a sense of self enough that they aren't even grabbing an animal effigy. Or it doesn't really look like any of these are made to look like an animal. Although that one uh, you say looks like a deer. But if you look at it when you look at the wood thing, you're like, okay, no, no, not really. That was just some lines on a paper, and I seen an elephant in the clouds, but that's not really what that was, but those are eyes, and then there's lines, almost like a guy had too many eyebrows. Anyhow, I see these image, images, unity and diversity of the world that surrounded the creators of this idol, which clearly wasn't divided into the kind and evil spirits, but I showed you it kind of might have been. That bottom one or two could even be the underworld guys, a god of this earth, lightning god god in heaven could easily go for that and stuff you know and the venus statues it doesn't seem like there's anything that goes with that in that but you find the venus statues that carry all the way across malta boy had one all the way for work malta boy yeah, like malta in greece but malta with just a apostrophe in between two a's in the middle of that way over here in that proto-indo-european language kind of strange malta boy altar boy let's not go there we are a long way from unraveling the ancient codes left by the craters of the Shigir uh, doll. There's nothing in the world similar to this idol and no written data left. There are interpretations that could be something like a totem pole, but it is only a suggestion. It could also have been a hidden sacred place, yet there are not enough facts to support any of these suggestions. The Shigir doll is on display at the Svaradis Regional History Museum in Yakatnebur. And uh, so... It, it could have been a place like, I don't know, let me give you an idea. If you've seen the movie Brother Bear, where they go into the little cave, they do their spit thing onto the wall with their hands, right? And then the bear puts his paw up and stuff at the end of it. But um, what, let's say it is in a cave, that it's on the side of a lake, and that they had a totem instead. And, of course, it sounds very Amerindian-ish until you find out it's in the Urals, and the people connected with it are definitely Caucasians in a blend but let's look at their little uh, little show they've got here it's actually an HD Siberian Times one of the world's oldest known wooden sculptures or it is the world's oldest approximately 11,600 years old good 3D effigy of this they put a good quality camera on it on the slow roll mounts yeah three times as old as the Egyptian pyramids 
found in a peat bog in the Urals in 1890. And this is proto-pre-Amerindian totem pole concept. There's all the faces circled on it that they find. I guess that is eight. If you count those two as eyes. It said it was originally 5.3 meters tall, made of larch wood, for basement and head carving using silicon faceted tools. In other words, you know, charted with flint type things and obsidian and so on, but no. They say this thing was carved, or a good portion of it, by the way that it's ground, right here, with the jaw of a beaver that had its teeth intact. Scientific findings suggest that the images and hieroglyphics on this statue were made that way. wicked free proto Amerindians isn't that great hey there's Joanne Fletcher she's the one that does the one that shows you all the different types of hair that are there in Egypt and then she got kicked out <laughs> uh, yeah so guys like share and subscribe but uh, yeah take a look at that it uh, definitely is a human form and not animistic at all either but what connection does each one of these guys have and tell me down in the comments I mean I, I really think that it's a totem pole and I really think that it's proto totem pole type concept and that this is probably where these people came across with these concepts they would do from sacred trees and cut these things out and they started doing it in the Americas and the Amerindians took on the same concept and kept doing it. Would be badass to find one of these men out of a redwood? Yeah, one of those 300 foot tall redwoods. Anyhow, guys, peace.